Hello, this is uh, QM, short for Quinta McLeod, and I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't understand. So someone please help me figure this out. People are saying that Nintendo are, is struggling. Nintendo is struggling. And I don't get it because, you know, I'm going on, I'm listening to these YouTube commentators and... They're saying what Nintendo needs to do to turn themselves around. You know, I'm hearing things from, you know, Hip Hop Gamer. I'm hearing things from uh, Black Bond, uh, HD Broken Gamers, Broken Gamer HD, I think his name is. Even uh, Adam Sussler. Hearing advice from these people saying, oh, this is what Nintendo needs to do to turn themselves around. And what makes it funny is that. Sony just reported a 1.1 billion dollar loss selling their PC division off firing 5,000 people and even prior to that they fired even more people I think about what 1,200 and then they sold buildings which I've mentioned in a previous video sold buildings and Sony is clearly clearly struggling and it's not just Sony Microsoft I wouldn't say they're struggling. They've got plenty of money, but they're losing money off their Xbox division. And everybody knows, but this is not being reported. Like, no one's reporting the fact that Microsoft has been losing $10 billion a year off of their Windows 8 and Xbox divisions. And with the new CEO um, now at the arms chair of Microsoft, say the throne of Microsoft, you have the shareholders you know, requesting that this CEO kill off these divisions with the Xbox division being included. But that's barely ever reported. Like, no one's talking about it. This is big, you know? I mean, Microsoft's own analyst has been saying that they've been losing $2 billion a year and that they've been covering up that loss with Android... Um, royalties that they've been collecting and and then you have these uh shareholders who have not been quiet about getting rid of the xbox division they have not been quiet they've been constantly requesting these this division gets the boot and it doesn't even stop there it doesn't even stop there 2014 looks bare you know sony just came out and said oh we don't even got 100 new games for you know, 2014, that's great. We haven't heard anything about it yet. But for their major titles have been pushed back. Sony and Microsoft's major titles have been pushed back to later on this year. Some of them pushed even further beyond. 2014 doesn't look like... I don't see a ton of games for these systems. I'm not saying the Wii U. I'm saying Microsoft and Sony systems. I mean, the Wii U seems to be getting games like Bayonetta 2, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers X, Hyrule Warriors. I mean, we at least... I can name off more games that's coming out on the Wii U in the next couple of months than I can on any of the other systems. And another thing that hasn't been reported is that majority of the indie games that are coming out, majority of them are exclusive to Nintendo systems and no one is talking about it. These indies are obviously skipping out on the other next-gen consoles and making their games PC and Wii U. Some of them are just Wii U and 3DS or maybe even just 3DS. Like Nintendo is getting all of these indie games and no one is saying a word. No one is saying a word yet a game Watch Dogs can get delayed and that's all over the news. One game, one game gets delayed. One game, one game, and everyone goes nuts. But I will even go as far as saying 50 to 100 games skip the Xbox One and PS4, and no one says anything. And I say 100 games because Sony announced 100 games for the PS4, which I'm assuming majority of those are indie games. But there has already been over 250 plus indie games announced for the Wii U. 
250. And if you want to know more about that, I think it's on the Tenno Enthusiast website. You can go there and see the list for yourself. But 250 compared to 100 on Sony, the uh, PS4, and 30 on the Xbox One. I believe that's what uh, Microsoft said last. They had like maybe 30 developers, 30 indie developers or something like that. That's not a lot compared to 250. It's not a lot. And uh, yeah, we don't hear anything about it. Nothing. Nothing at all. And people are giving Nintendo advice on what they need to do. It doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever. If anyone needs advice, it's Sony. Right now, Sony. Sony needs advice. Microsoft, they've got money to burn. You don't really have to tell them anything. They'll figure it out. Sony, they're desperate right now. You know, they're desperate. They, I don't know how much longer they're going to last. Any company that's caught selling off divisions, buildings, firing thousands of people. I'm not saying hundreds. Thousands of people. Thousands. Now, just to give you an idea of what thousands mean, everyone knows that Sony fired 5,000 people globally. Now, Nintendo, they've, they've have employed about, I believe, around 7,000 people. 7,000 people. So 5,000 people being laid off, that's most of Nintendo. That's most of Nintendo. Think about it. They are firing a Nintendo's worth of people. That's too many. That's, that's far too many. And people just gloss over it. Don't even think twice about it. Some people even deny it. I, I was on uh, Google Plus talking to somebody about this. And I told someone, I said, hey, you know, Sony, they fire 5,000 people. Nintendo is considered a bigger company than Sony. Blew their mind. They didn't believe me. I had to give them articles. Show them. They didn't believe me. Because this, this sort of thing is not uh, in the media as much as Nintendo's... Uh, woes, I suppose. Nintendo's woes blast all over the place. Like, I don't even understand it. Because that's not the issue. It really isn't. Nintendo is fine. I even go as far as say Microsoft is fine. Their Xbox division, that I don't know. That I don't know. But Sony, mm, not at all. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, there's a ton of indie games exclusive to Nintendo systems. So many of them are skipping out on the PS4 and the Xbox One. No one says a word. But with these other third-party games, some third-party games that we know or don't know if they're going to be good or not. I mean, like that one Aliens game by, by uh, Creative Assembly. The same guys who brought you the Total War Rome 2. You know, that atrocity of a game. Yeah. And people were getting excited off of that, despite their track record of just making strategic games. That's what they usually do. Strategy games. Yeah. And Nintendo sort of got flack for that. For a game that hasn't even been proven by a developer who has been known to make... I mean, their strategy games are okay. Their latest one was just bad. But the type of game that they're making, they're not known to make it. It's a coin toss. That's basically what it means. It's a coin toss. You don't know how good that game is going to be. You don't. Based on the developer's track record, you just don't know. But yet, that's a strike off of Nintendo. You know, that somehow hurts Nintendo. You got these other games, you know, that uh, saying, oh, you know, we're not going to have a, a Wii U release or whatever. People are saying, oh my god, you know, it's not going to be on the, on the Wii U. And these games, meanwhile, some of them aren't even coming out this year. I mean, really, really. They're not even coming out this year. I mean, with problems like this, where you have games that people are, are striking against Nintendo because the Wii U's not getting them, and these games aren't coming out anytime soon, or being developed by people who either have no track record or a bad track record for bad games, uh, and that gets ignored, you know, it gets ignored. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm just trying to figure out, like, what is it that people want? Like, what do people want to do, you know? I mean, some of these people, I don't even think play games, really. Because if they did, they would notice that the lineup for the Xbox One and PS4 
bare bones. There's nothing there. Nothing. There's nothing there. I mean, my best friend, you know, he's got a, he's got a PS4, and uh, that thing's collecting dust. He's not playing any games on that thing. There's no games on it. There's no games that are worthwhile. There's no exclusive that he could just say, you know what, yes, this is why I bought a PlayStation 4. This game. It doesn't have that game. You know, Knack is definitely not that game. Killzone, which is just another Killzone. Killzone has never blew anyone away. I mean, this one graphically? Sure. Gameplay-wise? No. No. <sighs> Resogun? No. Flower? No. I mean, what game is on the system that blows people away? There is no game. And therefore, there's nothing for people to go crazy over. You know, the last couple of, uh, last couple of, uh, I'll say the last couple of months, I'd say. PlayStation 4 has been selling off hype. People who are really hyped about this and thinking, oh, the system's going to get all the games. Every game. It's going to get every game. And, uh, you take a look at the software sales charts, and there's not a single PS4 or Xbox One game. Not a single one. That's a problem. This ain't getting reported. No one's reporting on this. You're probably asking, well, well, why should they? Why should they report on this? Well, if a system sells, you know, breaks all sorts of records, sells to a level that no one's ever seen before, you know, a million in a day, no one's ever seen that before, ever, and not a single game on that system tops the charts, that's a problem. That's a problem. You don't break records and become the fastest and best-selling system in the history of video games and not have a game on the top 10. You don't. You at least have that one killer game that people want. The system didn't have it. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, when a system sells like that and the software doesn't hit the top 10 charts, it simply means that the system is being sold off of hype. It's unsustainable. That's what it means. It's unsustainable. What's going to end up happening is the PS4 sells based off its name alone. And then, after the reality sets in for the consumer, sales drop like a rock. That's just usually how it works. That's just how it works. If you have a system and you don't have a game to play it on, if you have a system and there's no game, I'd say, to play on that system, you have a problem. It's just as easy as that, folks. It's just as easy as that, you know. It's just as easy. And that's the one thing I just don't get, you know. I just don't get it. You have people out there um, predicting that the PlayStation 4 is going to be the next-gen winner. You know, it's going to win a generation. Based off just a few months of sales, yeah, it's going to win. A system doesn't sell itself, you know. Without games... A system is just a hunk of plastic. Games sell systems. Systems don't sell games. That's just how it works. If you have a Blu-ray player, you have a Blu-ray player, it's useless if you don't have Blu-rays to play in it. It's useless. That's like selling you the handle to a Gillette razor, meaning that you don't have the actual blade. You just have the handle. No blade. You're not shaving at all. Because you don't have a blade, you just have the handle. It's useless. It's just gonna sit there and do nothing. You know? I mean, I, ha I could simplify it even further. It's like having a toaster with no bread. You know? You're not making any toast. You know? A toaster with no bread is useless. It's useless. Of course, you could probably find other things to entertain yourself with it, but its main function, which is to toast bread, it cannot do without bread and that is the problem you have a system with no games now when I say no games I don't mean that there's zero games on the system there's games but it isn't that killer app that people say hey this is what sets the PlayStation 4 apart from all the rest the games that are on the PS4 are available on all the other systems which you know begs the point how can something be better if it's the same you know you can't have a system that is better than another system if it's the exact same thing. It has the same stuff. Now, people are going to point out things like uh, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition saying, oh, well, you know, uh, PlayStation 4 runs at 
1080p, 60 frames a second, well, up to 60 frames a second. It doesn't run at a smooth 60. It dips a lot. Very rarely ever reaches 60. And they said, um, uh, Square Enix, or I believe it's Crystal Dynamics, I believe those are the guys who were the developers for it. They said that they were going to patch the Xbox One version so that way it also runs at 1080p um, with the frame, uh, the FPS unlocked. So it can reach 60 as well when it gets the opportunity to. So, yeah. I mean, but these are the same games. Despite the graphical differences, these are the same games. The same games that you can get on a PC. Which, by the way, these games you can get on a PC. Which begs the question, what would be the purpose of getting a PS4 and Xbox One when their games are available on a system I already have? What would be the purpose? I mean, you could say, oh, okay, well, it's so you can save money. You know, save a couple of dollars buying a 400 or $500 console. But most, most people have a PC. And those who understand how to modify their PC can spend the same amount of money on a graphics card for their computer that will allow them to play all of those games. And I can understand that there's some people who don't want to do that or don't understand how that works. So they might buy a console to, you know, compensate for that. But you buy a console to play games that you can pretty much play on everything else. So it it's, doesn't even matter. You can get a PS4 and play Battlefield 4. You can get an Xbox One and play Battlefield 4. And if you have a decent computer, you can go ahead and play Battlefield 4 on that. So what would the reason be to get one system over the other? I mean, heck, you can get the game for your PC and the game will have better graphics. Way better graphics than any of those consoles can give you. And it'll run at 1080p, 60 frames a second. Guaranteed. And even beyond. It can go even higher. The PC can go to 120 frames on a 4K res screen. It can do it. It can do it. And, well, that's the problem. You see, because there's really... You see, what I'm trying to get at is that exclusives is what makes a system. Exclusives. A system that has unique games that you can't play anywhere else is a system that increasingly becomes more attractive than the competition because like I said earlier for something to be better it's got to be different you can't have two things that are the same and expect one to be better than the other because they are the same because they get the same game you know you get the same experience and that's the problem that's the problem and you got that, and then you've got the shrinking video game market. Shrinking video game market, and uh, these third parties don't even care. They've all, most of them gone on record to say they're going to focus on their established franchises. I know EA and Ubisoft said that. They want to, they want to focus on their established franchises. They don't want to take risks and make unique gaming experiences for people who aren't interested in sandbox games and first person shooters which is what the market is pretty much flooded with right now it's those two genres you know it's just industry is getting smaller and these third parties i mean the bigger third parties you know, the bigger third parties the smaller ones not so much but well i've spoken long well enough so we're going ahead and uh call it a day and uh see you folks later